Hello and welcome to the show. Now, an SUV has never been around the Hot Wheels Showdown course, and apparently you guys really wanted to see me have a go with the Jeep. Now, I don't know if that means there's something wrong with the Jeep and that's going to cause all sorts of weirdness with it, or whether you just happen to all agree that you wanted to see me try an SUV. Either way, we're going to have a go with the, uh, the Jeep Cherokee, the Grand Cherokee, and see how it might fare. Big heavyweight vehicles have tended not to do massively well. Um, I guess the closest we've had is sort of the, the Rolls-Royce and the, the Bentley being, you know, they are large and heavy, but they're not quite as, uh, well, high a centre of mass as the Cherokee. We'll see how it goes. Um, Engine-wise, I don't know if we're going to be using anything different on this car. The rules of this series, of course, must use the standard engine if at all possible. I mean, it's got a pretty decent engine to begin with. If not, we do have a couple of options of the V10 and the V12, so there can be plenty of power in this. Now, it does have all-wheel drive, which may or may not be an advantage in this series. Uh, let's stick it on some nice race tyres, jump the PI up to uh, the well, the bottom of S1 class. Relatively high starting PI, actually, on this Jeep. Nice big tyres around the other uh, place. Of all the series, though, that we've done, all-wheel drive is less significant here at the Hot Wheel circuit, owing to the fact that it is primarily medium and high-speed corners. There's no real big acceleration zones, not like you had to deal with at the uh, the hill climb course. We'll see how it, let's see how it fares, really. All-wheel drive, kind of the bigger downside of all-wheel drive, is just often mean the vehicles have higher PI. It tends to penalise them a little bit more in terms of the, uh, the PI. Sometimes a few of them get away with it, but uh, yeah, not all of them. Right, weight-wise, we are going to be down to just over £4,000. Actually, not too bad in terms of uh, in terms of weights. You might expect a car like this to be heavier than, uh, than that. Now, the big question is, what can we do power-wise? I fear this might be too high a starting PI, and that it might not actually get that much power in it. Uh, we are, I mean, we're creeping up towards the 500 horsepower mark. We'll probably get well over the 600 horsepower mark. The problem is, is that we've had cars with 700 horsepower that have been, well, half the weight. Yeah, I mean, okay, we're going to probably have to go for some form of forced induction. Do we go supercharger or do we go twin turbos? I think supercharger, because why not? Um, oh, we need to go put a diff in the car. We do also need to do gearbox as well. Uh, because we need to be able to adjust gear ratio is most important when we're coming to a course such as this one. Uh, maybe we'll go back a couple of stages here then. 729 horsepower in our Jeep. It's not a bad amount of power per se. It, the torque isn't perhaps quite as high as the Bentley, 637. As I said, it's a fair amount of weight. I think it might be likely to struggle a bit might struggle a bit around this around this course. It just doesn't have the power to weight ratio. That being said, you never know. You never know. So we will, of course, have to go and give it a try. So our Jeep is to be brought to the skyscraper takeoff circuit where it is going to have five laps to try and go as fast as possible. Now, we can kind of ignore the top of the table. We're not going to be getting into the 133s. I, I would be astounded if this yeah, <laughs> vehicle get a 33. He's not going to challenge those guys. We're probably going to be looking around the maybe the Rolls Royce Wraith, the 36.8. Uh, I mean, the Bentley did a 35.9. Uh, so if we, if we can sneak this into the 35s, that would be pretty good going. I'm, I'm thinking that might be a little bit ambitious. I'm going to be honest with the, uh, with the Jeep. Admittedly, it is... Um, not quite, oh god, it is not quite as heavy as I feared it might end up being, but much the same way that the Bentley uh, just couldn't accelerate. It just didn't have the power to weight ratio to really accelerate out of some of these corners. Loses a lot of time that way. Uh, this is potentially going to have similar problems because it's unlikely to handle as well as the Bentley and then struggle on the old acceleration front. Uh, the gears, there are eight in this Jeep. I completely forgot about uh, about that one. Oh, okay. It's actually... I've got to be a bit braver with this, because that could actually carry some decent speed on the exits of that uh, split section. 
Uh, yeah, there's eight gears, so don't worry about the fact that there's a sixth already around here. It will have, well, potentially Tohen. My god, it is slow down there. It's only 153. That might be the slowest car that we have seen. This is going to have to do some mega making up of time through the corners. Just to not be last, I think. Oh dear. Um, I digress. It gears, gears-wise. Um, I didn't actually have to adjust the gear ratio, of course. Seventh and eighth designs to be sort of economy gears will actually work out quite well for this in terms of allowing it to run to a uh, high top speed. The concerning part was that the benchmark reckoned the Jeep was only going to hit 188 miles an hour. Now that uh, is, I suspect, aero limited. My god, that got a good run and that's really struggling around there. Now we have got gravity to help us, but we're going to run out of speed at 200 miles an hour and that is it. That's not so great. It's not quite what we want to be seeing on an opening lap. A 39.6 from a, a standing start. And remember, all-wheel drive cars will be less affected from a standing start. Of course, they accelerate up to speed quicker. There isn't a huge differential. I say there's a huge difference. It's certainly not as big here as it is at some other circuits from, uh, from a standing start because we have such a slow final corner. Much like the Bentley, relatively good through this first section. Surprisingly for the Jeep, we can't quite carry it flat out all the way up there. It's worth a try. Again, kind of got to learn what is the Jeep capable of, what is the Jeep not capable of. Can we be flat out through here? Probably not. Uh, it, it does hold. It's 138 miles an hour. 100, I think it might be 137, actually. Um, that holds very good speed. I mean, it's always up there with the Mercedes 190E in terms of speed at that section. The problem is, then we can't get down here, for example. We are so much slower than everything else. I mean, I think the, ben the Bentley was slower. The Bentley was about 160, mid 160 miles an hour, if I remember correctly. This is uh, <laughs> not good there. Not good at all. It's, what, 30 miles an hour down on the Ferrari 166, 20 down on a lot of the quick cars that the God have been doing. 170s into. Uh, that kind of an area. Come on, Jeep. Oh, we're a little bit wonky, a little bit twisted. Boost pad your way up here. Oh, we're struggling. It really, really struggles at the loop there. That has real issues around the loop. I'm trying to sort of dive down to the inside, get a better run. It just can't deal with the... There's so much weight and just a lack of power pulling the car around the loop. It's a 37-1 from the Jeep. I'm not sure... Not sure we've got, um, well, a second in the car. I don't think we can get the, the the high 35s. I just don't think we can we can do it. Maybe, just maybe be able to squeak our way into the, the mid-36s with a perfect run everywhere. But, yeah. <laughs> Aside from that, it's going to be a difficult old slog for this car. Now, we've seen issues with vehicles going up around the loop before. The one that springs to mind uh, most, the Lotus 311. Now... That car's problems were brought on. I've done, done terrible things through that. Um, the Lotus's problems were brought on by it simply not having the power. It didn't have, you know, it's decent enough through the corners, but it didn't have enough power to pull itself up the up the very, very steep incline particularly well. And the Jeep's problem, I think, is it doesn't have, well, it's the power to weight ratio in the end. Well, it does have 700 horsepower, which is a good horsepower. It's so heavy that, uh, yeah, it's not quite able to pull itself around that loop with any sort of speed. And... When we've had cars holding, well, 200 miles an hour, I think the fastest vehicles we've had in this series have been able to hold about 200 miles an hour around that loop. You're 30 miles an hour down at that section. That's going to be costly. That's going to be very, very costly indeed. And if we don't get a good run off that boost pad, I think we're in a world of trouble going up here. I mean, maybe put it down into... Ah, oh, really struggles. I've tried to sweep down too soon to try and get any sort of speed out of it. That's not a nice experience in the Jeep. I can't carry speed there. Right, we have got a couple of laps. We have got a couple of laps to try and find, well, anything with this. Where are we going to find it? Um, it's going to have to be done in the corners. And that's a weird thing to have to be trying to do with the Cherokee. I and mean, it's this night we're flat out through turn three. You know what? Much like I said with the Bentley, this feels like through these first quarters, probably helped by all-wheel drive, but through these first quarters, I think this is right up there with some of the fastest cars, in fact, we've seen. Its first sector time is very, very good. The problem is it all goes away when we then have to start worrying about these corners and we have to start worrying about the medium speed acceleration. That's where the cheap cut can't do it. It can carry, yeah, it can carry the corner speeds, I reckon, with the best of them. 
which is a weird thing to say, uh, but here we are so slow coming into the uh, crossover section. where We can be relatively late on the brakes, brakes pretty good on this for slowing down a big heavy SUV, but it also helps when you're going 20 miles an hour down on just about everything. It does feel like a better lap. And this is the car that might actually be closest to running flat out through this turn. I'm actually only having to lift halfway through the corner there to get the vehicle slowed down to a good enough speed. It's carrying, again, very, very comparative, very um, competitive speed through that section. Oh, we had a good run. That's about the best run we've had off of the boost pads up to 204, 205 miles an hour. It does still dip below the 180 mile an hour mark. Try and get all of the speed that we can down towards the final quarter. It's 200, but that's 20 odd miles. That's 22 miles an hour down on the Dodge Dart. Oh, oh, we've done a mega lap though. <laughs> Where did that come from? I mean, it felt like a good lap. Oh, and then I pushed it way too hard through turn one, trying to go faster. Where on earth did that lap time come from? That's ridiculous. <laughs> that shows what the quarter speed can do in this Jeep. That is not what I was expecting out of the car whatsoever. Oh, I'm, I'm trying to... <laughs> when you do a lap, lap like that, when you're then trying to go faster, you have to then be even more aggressive with carrying quarter speed. And... Well, that's not quite working. It's not quite worked out on this lap. It's not going to be a quicker lap, this one, uh, unless I do something massive uh, through these later stages, which I doubt it can. Doubt it can do. I'm still a little, a little bit in shock with that. That was all quarter speed, which, again, is, is counterintuitive in many ways to, um, well, to the sort of vehicle that it is. Yeah, it has some big tyres. Don't get me wrong, it has got some very, very big tyres on this which undoubtedly will help the car but there's still a lot of a lot of SUV and a lot of uh, relatively high high up weight you know high center of mass not traditionally good when it comes to the old quarterings oh I completely fluffed that one up over uh, over there I forgot to change it up in a momentary lapse of concentration forgot that we had seven eight gears so that done there did not work in any way shape or form uh, yeah it's a terrible terrible final lap a surprising, after the first few laps, and, uh, well, the general look of the stats of the car, a surprising term, turn of speed when you get it right. Very, very easy to make mistakes. Very easy to have problems with this, uh, with this Jeep. But, but, that all being said, it can go surprisingly quick. It's the, the grip of the car. It is very good through the corners. As I said, you know, there are a few places. This is keeping up with... The likes of the Mercedes 190E, through the first sector, it is massively fast. Now, helped by all-wheel drive out of this slow turn one, turn two area, that'll help it. But it's flat out to, through turn three. Doesn't need much in the way of a break through turn four or a slowdown through turn four either. So the corner speed that you can carry in this Jeep is absurd. However, however, that lack of any top-end speed, the acceleration is woeful. Probably one of the slowest cars in terms of acceleration. Uh, will always, always be problematic. That being said, though, the time will put the car into 22nd place. Yeah, it is down towards the lower part of the table, but it is a tenth, in fact, it is exactly a tenth of a second down on the Lotus 311. <laughs> the Jeep Grand Cherokee around a circuit that we have seen does require a lot of handling is a tenth of a second down on the 311. Another car that interestingly struggled with acceleration in places as well. Um, it is only a couple of tenths down on the Puma Mobile on the Alfa Romeo 4C at the AMC Gremlin. Isn't that far away? Three tenths down on that. It beats the Bentley Continental Super Sport. It beats the Subaru Impreza. It beats the Twin Mill, the Jaguar XES. I'm, yeah, I, I was not quite expecting to be able to drag that sort of time out of the car. Mega fast through the quarters. A hell of a good driving car through some of these turns, but... But the power to weight ratio gives it all sorts of issues and just, yeah, acceleration not helped. Aerodynamics not helped as well. Let's face it, big SUV doesn't exactly cut through the air particularly well. That, though, is going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, uh, goodbye. <laughs>